<clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to talk about some stuff <clears throat> and some things. But before we talk about the stuff and the things, I think it's important uh, that I address some of the comments on my uh, recent video, excuse me, recent live stream. Um, no, don't try. Don't, don't try to forget this story, because this is something that we all need to remember, because apparently on uh, yesterday's live stream, people seem to have forgotten um, how low the standards are in the community. So I think it's very important that it stays fresh in our mind that these are this is a story that this couple put out because they wanted to show off their love story. I want us to make sure we understand what people consider like worthy and aspirational in the uh, black community. Let me Google aspirational to make sure it's a word because it feels like a word. OK, it's a word. Phew, phew. <laughs> they almost called me lacking. <laughs> I was like, wait, aspirational don't sound like a word now that I said it. But I'm pretty sure this is a word. I'm pretty sure sometimes I have to sometimes I have to check, guys, because I'll be like, I've been using Majugali for like seven years and I Google it. It ain't even a word. So Majugali isn't a thing? Really? Yep, I just Googled it again just to make sure. Majugali is still not a word. I swear I just woke up one day and it was no longer a word. So that's why I have to check. <laughs> I'm not saying it's like dementia or something like that. I'm just saying sometimes I have to check to make sure that I'm actually using a real word in real language. <clears throat> so no, we're not going to forget the story. What are you trying to understand, Chrissy? Welcome, by the way. Welcome for Abdi. Welcome the other MJ, Yolanda, KO. All right. So we have the usual suspects in the chat today. Good. Hello, um, mistress. Welcome. Snappy one. That looks like a new name. I feel like I haven't seen snappy one before. Let me check. Oops, I almost put you in timeout. This happened the last stream, too. I accidentally deleted all of somebody's comments on the video. Oh, I think it was Hey There. That's why she's a mod. Hello, Pearl. Mara. Okay. This story was featured in the New York Times. So I distinctly remember this story coming out, and I don't remember anything else about it. I don't know what happened during that time period. I looked on my channel because I was like, did I cover this? Apparently not. Apparently, this just came in my mind and escaped my mind. And I'm so happy for that. I'm so happy that I didn't have to experience what you all were experiencing back then because it would have broke me. It would have broke me, y'all. But now it's been a few years now. So I have strengthened. I have strengthened my my um my mind to be able to read such stories. It's been two years, two years since this came out. So it's just about that time. I wonder if I can see, let me see. I wonder if I looked them up. I didn't see any updates. Uh-oh, not I Googled his name and it's on r slash black ladies Reddit. Not it's on Reddit. I don't know a lot about Reddit, but I know if you're on Reddit, it's ghetto. It's ghetto. If your story's on Reddit, it's ghetto. Wait, she's a vice president of a... So let me just be straightforward with you guys before we get into this story. This is supposed to be a relaxed stream. This is supposed to be a relaxed stream. So I'm going to try to read it slowly because I feel like if I take the story in slower, I'm less likely to have an aneurysm. So we're going to try to relax today because I did not know she was a whole vice president of a company. I did not know that. So again, I'm blind reading this. I did not read this at the time that it came out. So this is my first time reading this story. I literally Googled it because we talked about it briefly yesterday in the stream. I was like, now that I think about it, wasn't there some dude who proposed to a woman in the Popeye's parking lot or something like that? And that made me look it up yesterday. And I read like the first paragraph of this um, New York Times news article. And I was like, all right, that's all I can take for now. Let's suffer together. 
that's what we're gonna do a community whoop, whoop. he got that light bill though hello dominica sunset i think that's a new name too thank you for stopping by for a bit can you leave a like on the video for a bit hey you don't have to but i would appreciate it okay all right tori's here now we can get messy Every, the gang's all here so now we can get messy productions here production is always messy so now we can really get into it so let me first address uh some comments on yesterday's live stream let me pull it up because i do think this is important yesterday's live stream by the way if you missed it was um do black women expect too much and aside a very short conversation during that actually about the pasta and lobster stuff with professor raz so we have two comments that i wanted to look at one of them i think i understand but disagree with and the other one um i don't understand it at all but somebody commented on it and they were like yes this spoke and i was so maybe y'all will understand it i'll also quickly drop the link in case those people are in the chat today and they want to come up and just explain because when i say i didn't understand i mean that genuinely i'm not saying that to slight anyone um i'm saying that because i legitimately did not understand one of the comments i didn't understand how and one of the comments i didn't understand at all like i don't even know what the message was or how it was relevant to me again i'm not saying this to slight anyone i'm just saying um so let's start with let's start with the one i don't understand at all so we have a comment from a weathering ton one he says hello brother good afternoon i appreciate you trying to look at some of the internal struggles plaguing our community my only critique when you guys provide this kind of content is that you only critique women when we know for a fact women are actually in therapy over 60% more than black men. So the, the title, these are the weak woman, women, whose, whose past relationship traumas control their future should be, these are the weak people whose past relationship traumas control their future. What that does is open the conversation so that men and women can hopefully begin looking inwards and figuring out what am I doing for, for prevent me? What am I doing for prevent me from having, I think he meant to prevent me from having and maintaining a healthy relationship. It is not saying black men have zero responsibility and accountability in how you all see and subsequently treat and engage with everyday women that you may not want to sleep with. Some of you will cite, cite, I think he meant cite with a C as in a citation, not cite with a S-I-T-E as in website, but I, I understand nonetheless. Some of you will cite religion as having placed you at the head of the table, but then y'all have zero understanding of your own spirituality. You as black men who want to be seen as kings in the head, in the lead, need to begin taking control of your communities to make sure your kids aren't growing and leaning into misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, and anti-blackness. Again, I appreciate where you are. I believe you can lift yourself higher and be a support and positive guide to the black men who support you and beyond. Be blessed, a, another concerned black man. So spelling aside, because I, I understood what was, um, what was communicated. The critique is that I am only critiquing women um, and that I need to critique both men and women, um, and that I am sort of, I guess he's saying I'm framing my content in a way that he believes I am uh, not holding men, specifically black men, accountable. And I'm saying that black men have zero responsibility um, 
And so I need to do a better job of making sure that my children don't become misogynist and uh, homophobic and transphobic and anti-blackness. So I don't understand this. I legitimately don't understand this. I'm not sure if he watched the video because I don't feel like this was related to that video, which is why I put the link down there because I thought maybe if he's here, which I don't know if he is, he could come up and explain better because that's not a critique I've had before. Um, but if you guys think I am not holding uh, black men accountable and I'm instead holding black women accountable too much, I do think that that is a, uh, that is a critique. I disagree, but I think that is a critique. Let me sip. My tea is warm. Coincidentally, I am sipping tea. But um, I've never had someone critique me and say that I am um, not holding black men accountable and that I am uh, only holding black women accountable and that I need to do both. So I do apologize. Um, I feel like this comment is misplaced, but then it has a reply that says, well said, in the clapping hands emoji. So when I read it, I dismissed it. But then I saw the well said underneath and I was like, wait a minute. So I missed something. I missed something. So I don't quite understand what this is aimed at, but I, I don't know. I don't understand. St. Marquis, I didn't forget yesterday that, um, let me see if I can find it. It's good that you're here. I'm going to quickly see if I can find it. Awesome. Um, I didn't understand what you meant by this yesterday. If I can find it. Oh, but this looks so small. I don't know if y'all can see that. St. Marquise, yesterday you said, but they both look like they work at Shake Shack and that she's ungrateful. And I didn't understand that too well. I was hoping you could come up and explain yesterday, but obviously that conversation has ended. Um, but if you want to give a short explanation in the in the chat, I'm here for it. I remember your name. That's the only reason why I remember uh, St. Marquis, because that's the uh, city I grew up in, in, uh, in Saganda. So I don't know if you're from there, but yeah. So back to the comment. Back to the comment. Receipts aside. Receipts aside. I'm, I'm just going to take the critique and move forward because I don't know. I don't know how to take it, actually. Um, I'm wasting my platform by only holding women accountable. So I will try to hold black women accountable less moving forward and to hold black men accountable more. Um, Kyoko pop, Kyoko co pop, Kyoko, Kyoko co pop, Kyoko co pop. Yes, there are two co's. Um, whoever wrote that doesn't truly watch your content. I actually talked with Raz about that yesterday after the stream ended because the title of the stream is like, do our black women asking for too much? So I was worried that someone might look at my video thumbnail and be like, oh, my God, here's another man of spear man who's holding black women accountable, but he don't actually want to have a nuanced conversation. Um, so. But she said everything on YouTube is clickbait. Don't worry about it. But I feel like this person might have looked at the thumbnail or title and then just like made a comment. And but then somebody said, I agree. Well said. So I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all have to let me know. But, yeah, I will try to hold black women accountable less moving forward and black men accountable more. Um, the next comment says, I do understand this one. Um, I absolutely love you. However, I feel continuing to make videos about this is just continuing this idea that black women are asking for too much. I know it's commentary, but I'm just wondering when we'll stop having these conversations because we know the e answer is no. Um, I don't know if yesterday you guys feel like the conversation we, um, 
had continues the idea that black women are asking too much. I personally feel like it did the opposite. Uh, but I did reply and say that I feel like these these types of conversations are getting a little exhausting, in my opinion. Um, like, I'm tired. When I was making this thumbnail and looking at the news article, I got tired, like inside, not physically, but a little physically, too. So, um, yeah, I do think the topic of dating is tiring. So hopefully we'll be returning to... Um, the reproductive women having the bone marrow babies. Hopefully we'll return to that as well as a surprise topic I have in the future, but I'm waiting to see if, um, if YouTube is going to demonetize that, uh, video I have for the future. I do have a surprise topic that I'd like to talk about. So hopefully we stay generalized and we don't, we don't talk about 50, 50 for like three more years. I hope not. I'm tired too. So I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Nobody asked me to bring the article back up, but I read it yesterday and I can't do this alone. No, I didn't make this stream because of the comments yesterday. But there was a comment yesterday from someone. I forgot who it was, but she said that. Um, what did she say? I don't have the comment saved. I do not have the receipt for that. But um, wait, maybe it's in these comments. Here, let me give y'all some uh some brain food while I while I pull that up. I have new Instagram memes for your pleasure. Mm hmm. New Instagram memes. Oh my God. What the French toast? Do you think I wouldn't find out about your little doo doo head cootie queen. I don't know if we can watch that. It might be copyright. I wanted to watch this with y'all so bad. I've been looking for this commercial for like 17 years. I don't even think the commercial is 17 years old. Baby, I just know that ain't no damn collard greens and hot sauce and fried fish and a taco. Baby, no, baby, my back is ready to extend. Give me thoughts. Baby, I just know that ain't no damn collard greens and hot sauce and fried fish and a taco. Baby, no, baby, my back is ready to extend. Give me thoughts. I think it looks nice. This is definitely um a back extension food since he said extend. Since he said extend, what is this? <laughs> Oh, yeah, this was a part of I was supposed to be um, putting this in my white women um, exercise thing because it's always this is the thing, too. If you all remember from yesterday, I was talking about 30 specifically 35 year old white woman exercises and how they're always like something that is not just running on a treadmill or I don't know what you would think of as conventional exercises. And I was supposed to put this in that video. What are the balls for? What are the buckets for? Where do the sticks come from? Why are there no black people? No black people. I'm looking. I'm pausing. I, I paused this like five times yesterday just to look for one. Just one black person. Just one. It's so weird because I see 35-year-old black women, regular exercises in the gym, running, maybe weightlifting. I see um, 35-year-old Latin women, Asian women, any, any group, even 34-year-old white women and 30 seven year old white women everything besides specifically 35 year old white woman exercises are normal i don't know what it is about this specific age and race combination we do talk about intersectionality a lot on this channel so maybe there's something about maybe we talk about black culture maybe there's a such thing as white culture right and maybe it is specific to 35 year old white women in a gym setting i don't know but that was just a part of the other video that's like unrelated to today inspiration oh my god <laughs> how's your day today oh my goodness it was hectic yeah i lost a nail is this your mommy <laughs> well sort of I call her mommy <laughs> Oh, no. I'd never be one to question the quality of your work. Because you're not being careful. <laughs> because you're not being careful. So okay. that's not my fault. Are we going to get this one fixed? Yes or no? That would be extra. <laughs> you have to take care of yourself. 
Oh, girl, I'm trying. Just do your best, Dad. I'll just What's it? Aww. Inspiration. Oh, my God. How's your day today? Oh, my goodness. It was hectic. Let's see what the comments say. Not her gaslighting you and then charging extra. Did she charge extra? This is what peak masculinity looks like. Take note, boys. Showing up for your kids is what makes you a father, not what's dangling between your legs. Zed Fighter 84 is coming for the men in these comments. He said, Where are the, where are the men? Um, where are the men who take care of their kids instead of swinging some dingling in these streets? So, um, that's not what I said. That's what Zed Fighter 87 said over here. He's coming for the men. Wait. Okay, I had to see what what is um, SZA? Is this the real SZA who commented on this? This is the real SZA. What is SZA doing over on this channel? It's always weird when okay, <laughs> whenever I see, <laughs> whenever I see um celebrities comment on a reel, I feel like I just pass by them at Walmart or something. It just feels like, what are you doing over here? Why why are you at? <laughs> Okay, let's see what he says um, is wrong. What's wrong with the day? The young ladies today, they're not learning from mom. How come we're losing recipes? This man says we're losing recipes. There's an issue because young women aren't learning how to cook and um, their mom's not teaching them, so we're losing recipes. What's wrong with the day? The young ladies today, they're not learning from mom. How come we're losing recipes? Let's see what the comments said. They said they noticed a tone change. He is not worried um, about women nowadays. He just wants to save them recipes. They said it sounded like he was addressing the nation with a catastrophe. Oh, somebody said, why don't you teach the young men then? Ooh, ooh. Anyway, the sacred text he was stressing. Anyway. I thought that was important to share. I did know that um I did know that I said I would not critique um women today, but here we are watching that reel. The Scottish accent is famous for being difficult to understand. Glaswegian accent. Okay. But the Glaswegian accent can be even more difficult. There are words and phrases in Glasgow that sound a bit like a foreign language even. I can tell by the comments on this, by the way, that this is about to be um, some mess because it, it says bro speaks doctor's writing. So I'm on a mission to find some people to help me translate. OK, so I love the Glaswegian accent. OK, had to take a sip of tea. I assume we're about to hear it now. And I was wondering if you could teach me some local phrases. Well, it's very hard to bring them to mind. This is the thing. It's all right. It's all right when you're not going to any and happy, happy as us. Hmm? You understand? The audacity to say you understand after that? <laughs> Glasgow? It says Glaswegian. I don't know if it's Glasgow. Glasgow. Is that a country? I'm legitimately. Oh, a Baltimore axe. Okay, that's all you had to say. <laughs> Somebody said all they heard was you understand. He had the nerve to say you understand. He was speaking in reverse. They asked him, what did he say? They said, how did he go from completely understandable to straight incoherent babble? Anywho, let me see if I can find one more. Are these those flying people? This was, again, just a collection of 35-year-old white women exercises I was looking at. But some of you guys said, <laughs> oh, no, I read the comments. It said white women will do anything but work out. Y'all are not about to y'all are not about to come for white women in these comments. They said white people when the function got coleslaw, white people when they have to do five sets of shenanigans after 15 reps of lollygagging. Anyway, they're training for their mega church performance later this afternoon. <laughs> Give me five sets of we. <laughs> Somebody said they don't care if this is a white woman activity. This looks fun. 
three sets of foolishness and tomfoolery. Anyway, yes, I plan to do a whole study about this. <laughs> they said this man does not believe in gravity. <laughs> All right, I'm not about to watch these shenanigans. I'm not about to sit here and do this. Let's get into the video. Let me um let me play my thing. Uh there was one more comment I wanted to address from yesterday. I forgot I was supposed to be looking for the comment and y'all were supposed to be watching the memes while I did that, but I started watching. So Um, so one of the people commenting yesterday pointed out something like, um, white women are, she didn't say white women specifically, but when I was speaking about specific issues that I feel like black women face, uh, as well as Raz yesterday, um, she said that this is women of all races. And not only is it women of all races whose, um, dating life looks like this, but she said that there is a certain social media mindset in some other stuff. I don't know if you are here. If you are and you would like to come up, you can, because I don't want to misrepresent your comment. Um, the link is pinned. You don't have to also if you don't want to. Um, but I want to make sure that we understand when I am saying something about... Um, when I'm saying something that is generalized, I want to make sure we understand that I'm not saying, because this was another critique I've got, I'm not saying that every single white woman ever has an easier time dating than black women. I'm not saying that no black women have ever had like a good date um, with any specific race of men or a bad date with any specific race of men. I wanna make sure you guys understand because I feel like some people don't, but I wanna make sure you guys understand that I'm speaking in generalizations. So when I say black women generally, I don't mean all black women in existence. Or when I say black men, white men or whatever, generally, I don't mean all, every single person in existence. And while I understand that some people, some individuals might have a different experience in other communities, I think that, um, I think in general, they don't, it's not as hard. I don't think white people have it as hard. So I want to make sure you guys understand that. Now let's get into this Popeyes because I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. I comb through the comments. I only get like seven. I'll see them all. No, you're not late, late. Don't worry. We just about to get into it. Matter of fact, let me timestamp this. This is the 28 minute mark. The video starts so I can uh, for the people who catch the replay. I got you. I got you. So how do I want to introduce this? Yesterday, we had a live stream where we talked and we talked about three. Let's call them case studies, three black women in particular who were facing an extreme amount of backlash online because of their dating standards. Um, one of whom said that she felt like uh, this man who took her to Shake Shack, she said it was giving cheap, it was giving low effort, it didn't seem very thoughtful. One of whom said she didn't like the cheap perfume that her date got her, um, and it's not something that she wanted. And one of them who said um, she asked for some money, but the man sent her an, an amount of money that was too low. And during this conversation, we explored the idea that apparently a lot of men um, and women have the thought that black women's standards are too high. So today I wanted to counter that with a, um, a case study of my own. <laughs> And maybe we can look into the data around this too, because I do believe the data corroborates this. Um, from what I know, the most recent data says that black women do date down generally as far as socioeconomic. So this feels like it aligns with the data, but maybe we'll get into that at the towards the end of the video.
So let's just read this article again. I have not seen I have not seen this entire story. I read the first paragraph that you see on screen now. So we are blind watching together. Got it. Get it. Good. Are you um picking up what I'm putting down? Ooh, that used to be my favorite phrase. Not two lives in one week, two lives in two days. I'm drained, swallowed up. Anyway, after a first date at Popeye's, marriage was on the menu. Let's pause. Does anyone see a here, poll? We're going to do some polls throughout. I like it when my audience participates. Y'all don't get to just sit by. Y'all don't get to just sit by. Let's just, let's, from the title, is it a red flag so far? Is it a red flag so far? Wait, they were eating KFC in the Popeye's? The effort that it takes to go to a restaurant, get food, drive to a different restaurant's parking lot and eat there. You could have went to a nice restaurant. So all I'm asking in this poll Make sure to leave a like on the video, by the way, if you're voting on the poll. All I ask is that um, after a first day at Popeye's, marriage was on the menu. Is there a red flag in the title? Because we're going to talk about red flags, too. Because apparently some people don't see red flags. Apparently being stood up three times is not a red flag. Only after being stood up the fourth time can you really be like, all right, maybe this guy isn't the one. But we'll get into it. Cause I already see a red flag. Cause y'all got mad at me yesterday for saying Shake Shack is cheap and not thoughtful and low effort. Okay, most of y'all are saying this is a red flag. Let's continue. After a first date at Popeye's, marriage was on the menu. I'm going to read this how I think they wanted it to convey emotion. <clears throat> Sharhia. Sharhia? Sharhia Wade was ready to forget about Stevenson Boyce. They put their full names on here. They don't, they wanted this story to get out there. They, they felt like we need to show people that love perseveres. Anyway, let me not drag yet. It's too early. Shahar, Shahia, Sharhea, Sharhea Wade was ready to forget about Stevenson Boyce, whom she met on Hinge, because he twice canceled. Oh, by the way, I have the Shade Room. I'm not going to keep pausing. I'm going to read. I promise. I have the Shade Room article. <laughs> so the New York Times and Shade Room's article read so different. The New York Times. The New York Times piece reads like a, like a think piece or something. And uh, the shade room, like even the language, they're saying the exact same thing, but it's so different. It's so different. He stood her up three times. Why is the shade room saying he stood her up, uh, excuse me, two times, but New York Times is saying he twice canceled their first date? Twice can Who is saying this? Who is writing? Hold up. Let me go to the author. I promise we're going to get into it, y'all. Who's the author? There's no author. They didn't want their name associated. Oh, Nina Reyes. Let's go ahead and Google. I need to understand who's writing this. Who's writing Twice Canceled? Who's writing Twice Canceled? She has more articles about people falling in love. Maybe Nia Reyes is a, um, uh-oh, uh, I got paywalled. Dang it. She has another article called Within a Week They Fell in Love. So maybe she's a romantic. Maybe she likes writing about these lovely love stories. I don't know. <clears throat> but soon after a third successful attempt, she was ready to marry him. Wait. She met him on Hinge. He canceled their first date twice. But after a third time, which was successful, she was ready to marry him. Okay. She does look very beautiful in this wedding photo. I'll say that. I don't know where they're getting married, but 
they look cute. I don't think the background looks cute, but I think they look cute. I'll say that. <clears throat> the parking lot of Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. See, okay, this. why are you writing Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen? Why are you writing the full name out? I feel like Popeye's is in trouble because y'all know when somebody uses your full name, that means you're in trouble. When somebody says Prince Victor Petty, I know that something's about to go down. I did something wrong. Why are you saying Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen? Yes, hey there. The Shade article says they were in the hood at Popeye's. It don't say Popeye, the parking lot of Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. I need to understand why these articles are so different, but let's just continue. Sorry. The parking lot of Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen in the Ro Rosslindale neighborhood of Boston. Okay, let's see. Let's Google it. Let's Google it. <laughs> y'all think we just about to y'all think we just about to um look at it no we're about to google it i want to see where they felt where she decided after being stood up two times this is the one when they finally went on the date let me see can y'all see my screen let put a one in the chat if you see my screen put a two if you don't I want to make sure we understand because who did people when people covered this article because y'all know I'm way behind. This is two years ago when people covered this article. Were they showing y'all the Popeyes parking lot? Because this is the Popeyes in Rosendale, Boston. Is there something on fire over there? <laughs> Y'all, I did not plan this. I didn't know we were even going to pull this picture up. Something is on fire. Maybe they're grilling something. It won't let me. Uh. What is on fire? Is this somebody's car? Are they? Is it? Are they tailgating? Tornado? I don't believe that. Anyway, so they met in this parking lot after he stood her up two times. Let me get a good look at 14 pieces for $13.99, 10 pieces for $12.99, chicken sandwich for $3.99. What? Y'all, a chicken sandwich here costs like $5.79. Anyway, let's take a good look around. They got a whole strip. Clinton Market. They got a fish market. Oh, they got Rusty's Liquors. Happy Dollar. What store do you guys think they were parked in front of? It said the Popeye's parking lot, but it looks like it's kind of shared. It's like a strip here. What's this? Here's another drive through restaurant. What's right here? What do you guys think this is? Oh, it's Dunkin' Donuts. Okay, maybe, maybe it's not a bad neighborhood. <laughs> oh, look, it, maybe it used to be a Blockbusters here, but it looks like... um. They took the sign down. Rest in peace, Blockbusters. What else is up here? Y'all might not think this is important, but it's very important. Metro PCS. Wait, is there? A, no, there's not a Metro PCS over here, is there? Here we're back at Happy Dollar and Rusty's Liquor. Here's Big Shoes. I've never heard of Big Shoes. That's new. Big shoes. <laughs> Maybe they sell Shaq's shoes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Big shoes. <laughs> Maybe you can get the new Shaq 11s there. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with affordable footwear. There is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. Oh, by the way, these uh, strawberry biscuits on the left here, y'all got to try these at Popeye's. An even more hood Payless? I thought Payless was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Big Shoes, I'm now finding out, is a more ghetto version of, excuse me, hood version of Payless. 
there's a Western Union here. Free money orders. I don't know. What do you guys think? If you met the love of your life here, if okay, if a man stood you up twice, but uh, but you for some reason you had it in you when he invited you the third time to go, and y'all met in this. Let's turn around and look over here. This lovely scenery. Look at the grass over here. Wait, do you think that's where they took their pictures? Hold up. Because I see a, a grassy background, so I'm wondering, do you guys think maybe it was over here? Maybe they <laughs> Babe, you know what would make these wedding photos really special? If we recreate. <laughs> If we recreate, it looks like there's a gentleman fixing his car here, and he has some help from his friend. It's a battery on the ground, I think, so he knows what he's doing. Uh, I think we, I think we're good. Are we good here, guys? There's a rent a center here. Super dollar, two dollar stores on one strip. That's all right. Save a lot food store. Looks like they have eye round roast, $2.99 per limb. I'm not sure if that's a good price. Pork chops, $1.99. Fresh jumbo eggs, 99 cents per dozen. That's pretty good. That is pretty good, y'all. 99 cents for one dozen eggs? Y'all. What else? Yellow bananas, 45 cents a limb. I think we're good here, right? We're good. We can move on. I just want to get a good idea of where they met, because if you told me your first date was magical, I'm going to go to that place. I'm going to be like, is it going to be magical for me? Expressions. I don't know what that is. What is expressions? Maybe like a gym clothing store. There's even more. Is that a second liquor, liquor store? No. Hold up. They would not have two liquor stores this close together. Okay. Looks like they got a nail salon and haircut place in one little caesars and a boost mobile okay so somebody said there was a um metro pcs here there is not but there is a boost mobile and a king smoke shop so oops i made it short how do i not make it short okay all right oh in the streets very close so now that we have a good idea of where they met, I'm going to keep this tab up just in case we need to come back here briefly. Um, let me get back to Popeye's. There's Duncan, so Popeye's must be close. There's Big Shoes, Happy Dollar, Rusty's Liquors, and Popeye's. All right. Oh, there's a McDonald's right there, too. What's this real quick? AT&T? Okay, they got AT&T and um, Boost Mobile, guys. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say lower middle class. I'm going to say lower middle class. Yeah, there's a... Oh, no. I thought it was a white woman walking. It's a white man, so it could go either way. Could go either way, guys. <laughs> so, now that I have this picture up there, let's go back to the article. <clears throat> The parking lot of Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen in the Rosslyn neighborhood of Boston is not a particularly romantic spot. What? You don't think this is a romantic spot? <laughs> anyway, this is where these people found love. It is romantic as it can get. It's not a particularly romantic spot for a first date. Nevertheless, when Stevenson Ricardo Boyce asked Shahia, 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 Octavia Wade, if she would meet him there one afternoon in May 2020, during the early days of the Big P, excuse me, the Big C, she didn't say no. <clears throat> she didn't say no. The two had initially connected a few weeks earlier on the dating app Hinge. Miss Wade, 34, said that Mr. Boyce, 44, I mean, who cares? was the first person she encountered online whom she wanted to meet in person. Okay. What do y'all think? I mean, I think they look cute. I don't think he looks bad. This is a side profile. So 
But my friend did tell me yesterday uh, beards are like um, men's makeup. So, huh? So they made up the dating app Hinge. She was 34. He was 44. And this was the first person she met online that she wanted. She wanted to meet in person. Welcome, Apple IFC. But when he called that afternoon, she suspected that he was about to blow off their first date for a third time. Before he could get to the point. OK, so he stood her up twice. He called her and she thought he was about to say, oh, I can't do it a third time. But before he did that, she said, I'll just cut. I just excuse me. I just cut him short and said, if you are calling to cancel again, then don't ever call again, she said. Maybe she should have said that two times ago. I'm not here to critique her. He countered with an offer to meet her in five minutes in the lot of the fast food chain. Let's meet here in five minutes. Just wanted to give you guys a visual, which was near where she then lived. In that lot, they talked so long that he had he had a meal bought at the KFC across the street as the line in Popeye's was daunting. They also shared a sunset and a first kiss. Now, I did not see no KFC over here. There's the McDonald's. They said it's across the street, though. So it's over there somewhere. OK, I don't have time to go all the way around this neighborhood. So um, let me pause and say this man was calling to cancel on her a third time. This man was calling to say, hey, I can't do this date. But because she cut him off and said, if you're about to tell me you can't come, we're never talking again. He panicked. He panicked and said, oh, my God, meet me in five minutes. He put on whatever he could find and drove his car to this parking lot and they talked. That's what I think happened. I don't know their relationship. I'm just reading. I'm just reading. So, uh, yeah, they met in five minutes in the Popeye's parking lot, and uh, they ended up buying a meal at the KFC across the street. It doesn't say whether he bought her one. It just says they bought a meal. So, well, it says he bought a meal. He had a meal. Not even he bought it. He had a meal. Why didn't it say they had a meal? Maybe it was just him eating. Mm. I appreciate you for meeting me here. <laughs> I'm sorry I only had enough for me. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be meeting, so I ain't bringing enough money for two meals. Mm. Mm. The sunset, nice. You want to make out? And that's their first date, period. I love it. I love it. We definitely couldn't stop talking to each other, Miss Wade said. Mr. Boyce added that their connection felt, quote, really awesome, like I'd almost known her a long time. <laughs> when the two met, Mr. Boyce, whose previous marriage of six years ended in divorce in 2011, uh-oh, he was juggling a whole handful, a whole handful of potential romantic prospects. But after a few dates with After a few dates with Miss Wade, those other five started to become very obsolete very fast, he said. Don't say I'm wrong. Y'all are about to come in and say I'm wrong. I didn't tell these people to meet in this Popeye's chicken lot and, uh, excuse me, parking lot and get married. I'm looking for an update. Don't worry. As we read this, I'm looking for an update because I need to see because the statistics I saw say if you divorce once, you're more likely to um get divorced twice. And maybe it has to do with the type of person who would meet you in a parking lot in five minutes because his other five dates stopped talking to him or something. That's what I'm wondering, um, Tamara. That's what I'm wondering. So he's a divorcee. 
Nothing wrong with that, by the way. And he was juggling a lot of women, five other women, and then six, including her. But um, those other five women, you know, he says became obsolete only after they started talking. Now, prior to this, he was standing her up in my mind so that he could go on dates or talk to these other five women because he might have actually liked them a little bit more than he liked her. I'm just speculating, by the way. I don't know their relationship. But the way this reads, he stood me up twice and he's talking to five other women. I feel like he's not standing up all six of y'all. I feel like he's standing you up because, um, what was it? Y'all know those tropes in like high school drama shows where oh my god brenda asked me to the dance and brenda's the love of I, brenda's like my biggest crush but i already accepted it from tamika what am i gonna do and then he tries to go to the dance with like both of them but they don't know and then they both find it. anyway i feel like he wanted to go to the dance with somebody else and this was just a woman who he had on the side just in case things fell through in those other relationships um, cause I don't think he was standing up six women. I think he was standing her up. Now, if these five, if one of these five women canceled on him and then he was like, Hey, you want to go out today? I'm free today. Uh, I know I said I wasn't free, but I just freed up. So I don't know. Let's meet at Popeye's. I don't know. That's my theory. I think he uh, I think he was too busy with his other five women and he didn't really like her like that. So that's why he stood her up twice. Um, but now he's scared that he's going to lose this option. So he tries to meet up with her real quick at Popeye's and do some low effort stuff just for this a breadcrumb. Right. Like um, instead of actually planning a date and being thoughtful and putting time into her, which he wasn't. Um, He's scared of losing her. So let me give her something. Let me just give her something to shut her up. That's what I think happened. But he said after they started talking, he didn't even want to talk to those other five women. Don't check his phone. We can trust him, right? <clears throat> Both have roots in the West Indies. Let's Google that. What is the West Indies? North America... Oh, okay. This is this the Caribbean? The Caribbean, the Caribbean. Why I'm talking like I'm in a uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> Wait, is it is it Pirates of the Caribbean? Wait, it's not Pirates of the Caribbean, or is that a completely different? Um, why you typed it like typing it is gonna make me pronounce it right. So it was Pirates of the Caribbean this whole time. Okay, so they're both Caribbean. I'm just making sure. I was looking at uh, what the West Indies is. See, and this is the difference between Shade Room and this article, because this article is talking about some West Indies. West Indies. Why did it just say they're Caribbean? So they're, they both have roots in the West Indies and learned that they share a commitment to family, community, and building generational wealth through real estate, hard work, and planning generational wealth commitment to family and community okay hard work and planning they both share a commitment to family community building generational wealth through real estate and hard work and planning you can tell they're really committed to hard work and planning too when that man said okay look you got to meet me five minutes we meet in popeyes uh oh popeyes is down don't worry i got the backup we can go across the kfc get it there and then we can sit in the popeyes parking lot don't ask me why we can't sit in the kfc parking lot that's not a part of the plan that i had ladies when you hear a man say i have a plan i need a woman who's gonna follow my plan they are out here they are out here this is a warning this is not a this is not somebody telling you what they want this is a warning i got a plan i need me a woman who gonna follow my plan hard work and planning you can tell by his first date the amount of hard work and planning this man does within the first couple weeks of their relationship miss wade recalls telling mr boyce that they were going to get married he looked at me like i was crazy she said <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs>
Miss Wade recalls telling him that they were going to get married. He looked at me like I was crazy, she said. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I would, too. I put together this last-minute Popeye's day, and you fell in love? Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. I didn't think that would work. I don't know what he was saying in his head. Yeah, my heart hurts. Um, My heart hurts. He looked at me like I was crazy, she said. One of the things that got me was he was describing his future, what he wants out of his life. At 44, why are you describing your future? Why aren't you there? Because cause somebody says she's a vice president. It don't sound like she's trying to figure out her future. It sounds like she's already there. So how is he 10 years older than you? And I mean, everybody move at their own pace. Nothing wrong with that. Y'all know the economy is what it is. Um, wages are not rising with the amount of um, the prices going up. Raises are not rising in conjunction with that. So I feel for everyone out here struggling. Um, I just feel like this is a mismatch. Miss mismatch. I have to remember mix match is not a word. It's mismatch. He was describing his future and what he wants out of life. <laughs> this this mixtape gonna get off the ground and you and it's gonna go crazy. I'm gonna make so much money on Spotify, SoundCloud. He was describing his future and what he wants out of life. And it sounded like he was picking my dream. She said it was surreal. Everything he was saying that he wanted about his future was exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, my God, babe. I want to travel the world. Oh, my God. Me, too. What? That's so crazy. I want to see Egypt, too. Oh, my God. Me, too. Anyway. Anyway, I would I just want to know what he was describing. I would be interested to know how he was describing his future and what he wanted out of his life and why it was her dream. Um, but she said it was surreal. It was surreal. Oh, here's another one. See, look, they don't look. They look happy. Oh, they have friends around. She said as soon as she saw this man online, this was the first man she saw that she ever wanted to actually meet. <laughs> I love that for them. I love that for them. They both look great and happy. They both look happy. He's like, I got her. <laughs> I got her. Ha ha. <laughs> ha 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 <laughs> voice of reason thank you for the five dollars i spit out my soda you did not need to send the five dollars to say that i promise you i'm reading y'all comments i'm reading y'all comments don't worry i'm going through y'all comments but i'll leave it on the screen since you um you felt like this was important for people to know so i'm gonna leave it on the screen okay Miss Wade, who graduated from Bryn Mawr College. Let's Google that real quick. Oh. Okay, looks like a reputable school. Founded as a Quaker institution in 1885. It is one of the seven sister colleges, a group of historically women's colleges in the United States. So one of 15 Quaker colleges in the United States. Okay. The first woman's college to offer graduate education through a PhD. So this sounds like a reputable, a reputable college. Um, I'm not looking this up to discredit her, by the way. I just wanted to know about where they go to school. That's the same reason we looked up this Popeye's parking lot. We're just trying to paint a picture about who these people are. So she went to this very reputable school um, and she holds an MBA from Boston University. She's also a vice president. She is also a vice president for global inclusion, diversity and equity at the Boston 
excuse me, financial services company, State Street Corporation, as well as the president of the Boston chapter of the National Black MBA Association. Wow. Wow. All this at all this at I think she was 34. That's crazy. That's a lot of accomplishment. That's a lot. Oh, I just read the next line. <laughs> Mr. Boyce, who received an associate degree in computer technology, woo woo, where my computer technology associates at in the chat. Come on, put them up. I know y'all are out there in associates in computer technology. I love that. I love it. I love people who go to school and they do something. I love that. It's always good to do something. It's more than nothing. Um, and he received his associate degree in computer technology from Bunker Hill Community College in Boston. I'm not going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up real quick. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to look it up. We can sit in silence for a little bit while I look it up. That's it. For just For just 30 seconds, can we sit in silence while I look it up? Cool. I mean, this is cool. I love that. I love that. Um, nothing wrong with an associates, by the way. Nothing wrong with that. Y'all know I have a GED. I'm not one to talk about somebody's education. I'm not. So I'm saying this genuinely. I love that for him. Now, do I love it for her? That's a different question, but I love that for him. So it's an information. He is a information technology systems cybersecurity engineer. Let's Google that. What is that? <laughs> I mean that genuinely. I don't know what that is. Cybersecurity engineer. Let me look up this salary. Okay, look, this salary, this salary is salarying. This salary is salarying. Oh, that's the upper end. Okay, what's the average? Oh. Okay, never mind. I looked up the average. It, it but for a second there, I forgot companies always like to put something lucrative on the site. But look, it's it's still respectable. It's not like he's broke. I'm not going to say that he's broke based on the salary I Googled. Um but I don't know that I could say it is a uh, vice president. Um, and the president of the Boston chapter of the National Black MBA Association, but it's something. So I'm just saying this man is not like, he has something. That's what I'm going to say. And I love that for him. About a month after their first date in late June, 2020, he asked her to be his girlfriend. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's nothing wrong with having being boyfriend, girlfriend at 34 and 44. There's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't sound. Uh, I'm sorry. It sounds childish, but it's just my mind. I don't think this is, there's like actually a problem with dating in your 30s and 40s and being boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, and she agreed. So he asked her to be his girlfriend after a month of dating um a month after their first date she agreed but not before asking him to make it known that he was as she put it off the market soon afterward she laid out a plan for their future together so she said you're going to have to cut off those other five women um and let them know that you are she moved him in wait is did she did she say that well let's keep reading we're almost to the bottom by the way we're almost to the bottom so she said, you're going to need to tell them other five girls that you are no longer um, on the market before we get together. And he did soon afterward, allegedly. It doesn't say he did, but I'm going to just assume he did cut them off. Soon afterward, she laid out a plan for their future together. She said, I'm going to need you to move in in six months. She said, I'm going to need you to move in. Huh? She said, I'm going to need you to move in in six months. 
Mr. Boy said, I was like, what are you talking about? I barely know you. Six months later, I was moved in. She's, she said, I'm going to need you to move in in six months. Let me go back up here. Hold up. Because I could have sworn she said. One of the things she said, one of the things that got me was he was describing his future, what he wants out of his life. And it sounded like he was picking my dream. It was surreal. Everything he was saying that he wanted about his future was exactly what I wanted. All right. This is the dream. Living the dream. <laughs> Living the dream. Uh, yeah, I think maybe in five or six years, I want to move in with a woman. And, you know, she pays the bills, but I, you know, I'm there. And, you know, oh, my God, that's literally my dream. We would be so good together. I'm just I'm trying to imagine what the conversations were. I like I, I can only speculate. They don't talk about it. They're being vague. Some They're being vague, but somehow I feel like I know everything about their relationship, even though they're not saying it here. I feel like I know everything about their relationship. So um, this was the future she envisioned. She said, I'm going to need you to move in in six months. Mr. Boy said, um, I was like, what are you talking about? I barely know you. Six months later, I was moved in. By then, the two were already also engaged. Shout out to um, Orange Pill for the house theory and the women not having a house or something. Orange Pill tried to tell y'all why women shouldn't have houses because things like this happen or so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about that man, by the way. I only know that he doesn't like women having houses for some reason. He thinks that's stupid. I don't think that's stupid. But now that I'm reading what happens when women own homes, I am gasping. I'm clutching. Clutching whatever is nearby. Let me clutch this tea. <clears throat> this is lemon chamomile, by the way. Lemon citrus chamomile and apple juice because it was too bitter. I need to sweeten it up a little bit. So they were engaged. Mr. Boyce proposed that December while they were visiting Barbados for the holidays. On her dime, presumably. I'm just kidding. His friend and colleague, Wayne Austin, thought that the trip would be the perfect moment for a proposal. So much so that on his own, he bought an engagement ring for the couple. And in parentheses, it says Mr. Boyce quickly paid Mr. Austin back. OK, guys, don't worry. So this is the man who, where, let me go back up here. Here it is. When they were talking about what they had in common, they said hard work and planning was something that they really, really had in common. But they both share the commitment to family, community, building wealth, and hard work and planning. And we can really see that with the first date that they went on at Popeye's, as well as his friend uh, picking out a ring for him and buying it. And his friend telling him how and where to propose and what would be the best idea for him. I love that. Oh, my God. What made you propose right here in Barbados? Oh, my friend told me to. He bought this ring. But I'm going to pay him back for it someday. <laughs> Hard work and planning. I love that. Uh, I, I forgot I have a poll in the chat. Let me see what y'all voted. Y'all said 91% of y'all say it is a red flag. 9% of y'all said it is not a red flag. That's interesting. That's interesting. Well, for those 9%, the, the, the link is pinned. I would actually be curious for people who at this point still don't see a red flag, or maybe y'all were voting on it earlier. So I saw a red flag as soon as I Googled the article. I didn't even open it yet, and I saw the red flag. Okay, so he proposed because his friend, Wayne Austin, Wayne Austin, thought that he should propose. So his friend told him to propose there, bought an engagement ring for the couple, uh, which Mr. Boyce says he quickly paid Mr. Austin back. In April, Mr. Boyce and Miss Wade moved into a home that they built together. Yes, period. I love a queen who's going to hammer some nails and she's going to get that caulk. She's gonna put it on the walls with him. Baby, hand me the mallet. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hit this nail down. You hit that one down. I love that. I love it when people build together. We love that over here. We love a good love story. <laughs> Sorry. 
had a laugh bug. So they moved into a home that they built together in Randolph, Massachusetts, completing the first step of the shared vision through which they first connected. OK, so maybe him moving into her home wasn't a part of her vision. Maybe them building a home after he moved into her home later was the vision. I don't know what happened to her home. Maybe they use it for Airbnb or something. On July 23rd, they were wed uh, in front of 117 guests in Stowe, Vermont. I've never heard of that before. At the vacation home of Mr. Wade's friends, Max H. Bozerman and Marla Felcher. Mr. Bozerman, after receiving permission from Vermont, officiated at the out outdoor ceremony. As part of the wedding, the bride, who will be known as Mrs. Wade Boyce, and the groom each poured sand from the beaches on their family's home islands into a glass jar. Hers, which was black, came from Montserrat, and his, which was white, from Barbados. Aww. 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 Uh, yes, it was at her friends. They were uh, wed at her friends. Uh, these are her friends. These are not his friends. Uh, her friends, Max H. Bozerman and Marla Felcher, who also officiated at the uh, ceremony. Oh, I love a love story. I love that. I love a good love story. Who doesn't love a good love story? This sounds like the exposition to a murder. Stop. Stop. That's not what this sounds like, is it? Where is the high standards that people were talking about? Black women's um, standards are too high. That's what I'm looking for in this article, by the way. I'm looking for these high standards everybody's talking about. That's what I'm looking for. Let me see if the shade room actually wrote the article different. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Let's see just the title on the New York Times. After a first date at Popeye's, marriage was on the menu. Then at the shade room, bride who had a Popeye's parking lot first date before groom proposed with ring bought by friend. Oh. <laughs> Triggers Twitter critics. The shade room put everything you need to know in the title. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous. I'm so jealous. Let me find out y'all are giving these men houses. Y'all paying for their engagement ring. Y'all telling them where to propose. All I got to do is show up and follow instructions. Maybe his friend gave him the idea. Bro, you got to take her to the Popeye's parking lot. You got to do something. You got to do something quick before she stops talking to you. Quick. Quick. What's the first thing you can think of? Uh, uh, chicken. <laughs> That's it. You could go to the pop. I don't know how they were brainstorming this. I'm just imagining. That's an awful title. Mm. It's an awful story. Give me my Bath and Body Works. It's what I deserve. Um, look, Bath and Body Works on Instacart right now. I don't know if this is in everybody's area, but they're having two candles for $40, and they also have $20 off a uh, order of $40. So y'all can get two of them three wick, them big three-wick candles from Bath and Body Works. Any uh, flavor, not flavor, smell you want, and um, it'll only be $20, which is, I feel like, a lot for two candles, but they're Bath and Body Works candles. Their bath and body works candles. Okay, let's see. I want to see what the commentary is on this. Can I read the replies on this tweet? I'm going to need a six month follow up. Yeah, I need one too. 34. She's still too young to realize her husband is a build a bear. Nope, y'all don't get to say she's too young. Y'all don't get to say that. What The girls are calling it the Lulu now, but y'all don't get to say she's too young. Not this time. 
I'm sorry, 34 is up, up past my limit for when I can say, no, this is just naive. Young people are so in love. And because y'all know 18 to 21 year olds fall in love for anything, any reason. Y'all are grown. 34 and 44 is grown. Let me see if the shade room has any notable differences. I'm just skim through it real quick. They met on the dating app hands before getting married. Like, this is so much better to read. This is so much more. It just reads more messy than the New York Times. Just reads more messy. I feel like I need a uh, one of those fancy pipes and a monocle and a top hat to read the New York Times. You see, she was twice stood up. Who says this? Anyway, so he canceled their first date twice, and they finally met in the parking uh, Popeye's parking lot. She said that the line for Popeye's was so long. Baby, you want to get out of here? Ah, ah, I'm sorry. I'm getting, I'm getting chills. And the two continued dating as Stevenson let go of five other women he also dated. See, Shade Room got all the info we need in the first paragraph. And we spent an hour reading this New York Times and Shade Room had everything we needed. So let's just go through a recap and then we can we can wrap it up. The link is also pinned for anyone who has anything to say on this at all. If you would like to, you may come up if you'd like to, but you don't have to. She said the line was so long that Stevenson eventually purchased himself a meal from the KFC across the street. I'm sorry. I don't feel like we spent enough time on that. So how did how did how were you on this date? How are you on this date? What is this? I need to hear him talk because some people have charisma, right? Some people can say something stupid, but you will be so they'll say it right. They'll say it right. You know what I mean? I was talking about this like four years ago or whenever um Trump was elected. I was talking about this with my friend because Donald Trump got up there and there was some disabled person and he was like, man, F these disabled people. And he did some weird stuff i don't know if you guys remember this and, and everybody in that audience was like heck yeah this man got up here and said i'm going to build a wall and mexico's going to pay for it and everybody just stood up and cheered i don't know what it is about some people who are able to say anything it don't have to make sense they don't have to have a plan. They don't have to have a rhyme or reason, but they just say stuff and it sounds good. It sounds good. You talking to anybody else? I mean, I'm talking to five other girls, but now that I've started talking to you, they don't mean anything to me. <laughs> You're going to cut them off, right? Of course. <laughs> of course. I feel like I've known you forever. I don't know. Some people just got it. Some people just got it, y'all. So I need to hear him talk. I need to hear him talk. I'm also going to look for a follow-up in a second. I'm going to look for a follow-up. The two continued dating as Stevenson let go of five other women he also dated, eventually making her his girlfriend. Months later, Stevenson admitted he proposed to Shahia. Sharhea with a ring purchased by his close friend and colleague. The couple got married on July 23rd and after sharing the announcement publicly went viral due to their unorthodox love story. Y'all could have just shared the wedding. Y'all could have just shared the wedding. Why didn't you just share the wedding? Why didn't you just show? Oh my God, look at this beautiful couple. These wedding photos look so amazing. This ring looks so nice. Oh, you like it? Yeah, we met at Popeye's and my friend bought this ring and he told me how to propose. I didn't come up with it myself. Why did you have to tell us all this? Why? Why? Thank you, Alicia. This is a, embarrassing me. I'm not even a part of this story and I'm embarrassed. I feel like I'm going to be ashamed to go to work tomorrow and this story ain't even about me. Why is We need to talk about this because I do feel like some men have a need to embarrass their partner. Um, I was thinking about this after the Simone Bowles husband incident and how he could have got up there and said, when I saw her, I like, loved her so much and blah 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 like you don't have to lie but do you really have to come up here and say oh i wasn't even checking for her for her like that and she wanted to settle down but i still wanted to play the did you really have to come up here and like 
embarrass your significant other. I feel like this is a this is a plot. This is a plot. Something ain't right here. They got hundreds of comments. One Twitter user wrote their first date was not at Popeye's, which would have certainly been one thing. But in the parking lot of a Popeye's after he canceled on her twice, he was a divorcee 10 years her senior dating six women. His co-worker bought the ring. She is a vice president at a multi-billion dollar company. This has 215 replies. Let me get in these replies real quick. Why the first comment said, I can't read it. Someone give me a synopsis, please. The only thing I left out was he didn't actually go to Popeye's. He got something to eat at the KFC across the street because the line was too... Whew. I thought you just made this up for fun until I scrolled down. She said, I'm not this creative. I'm not this creative, too. I could have never made this story up, y'all. I could have never made this story up. Never. I, oh, I love a NeNe Links meme. I don't know who this is, but Tyler Perry. People are people are accusing this couple of being a Tyler Perry plant. Do y'all think this is act like in six months they're gonna be like this was actually the plot for a new movie Tyler Perry is <laughs> so this is what Tyler Perry is doing with that studio. <laughs> okay, the bride's friends. Okay, we didn't see this part. The bride's friends defends her Popeye's love story. A Twitter user who goes by Jasmine online claimed to know the bride Shahara Wade, Sharia Wade. Why is her name spelled differently on this article? personally and stood up for her after seeing negative takes on her relationship she tweeted <clears throat> as someone who knows this bride and was in this wedding know that she is happy thriving loved and blessed she never wanted to be married but she found in great guy i assume she meant a great guy who opened her eyes to an even more amazing life she is no fool and he does his part he pays that light bill. They are good. She continued to shoot down assumptions in a second tweet. So sad how y'all have replied and quoted this QT. That means quote it, right? Or is it like co-tweet or something? I don't know. With so many assumptions for getting how this works. The author picked the facts of the story to include and put it together just so y'all would eat it up like this. So much is missing as it typically is. Y'all keep on, though. Why do people do this? Why do people do this? Oh, my God. I know it looks so terrible to everyone, but y'all don't know the full story. What's the full story? I'm not going to say it here. There ain't no full story. There ain't no full story. Because I, the way I would be rushing, the way I would be rushing to correct... No, we didn't meet in no Popeye's parking lot. This article is just sensationalizing everything. We briefly met there before going to a fancy dinner. The way I would have cleared some stuff up, the way I would have cleared some stuff up so fast, this is a true story. Oh, and uh, Jasmine, by the way, if you guys don't know, she's claiming that she knows the bride personally, and she was standing up for her on Twitter. That's what was going on. Um Purple Lover, you said that you actually agree with his proposal, and you said that's how you want people to, your future man to propose to you, and that you see their the future and the vision. Keep hope alive. Heck no. <laughs> Child, if this is what, this is really, her standards is way in the pits of hell. Right in Saints butt cheeks. This is <laughs> this was how low can you make your standards go? And she made them go low, all right. But she liked it, I love it, I guess. <laughs> I can't sit by while people make bad decisions and just be like, I love that for y'all. I know I've been doing that this whole stream, but this actually makes me genuinely sad. This makes me genuinely sad because there is a very loud conversation online about black women's standards being too high. 
because a few women are on three black women are online one of them said uh thirty dollars ain't enough for food one of them said um what did she say cheesecake oh. factory is not a real date one of them said i don't want to eat at shake shack that's low effort so because of these three black women for some reason people feel like this is enough evidence to say that all black women's standards are too high too high but you're headed like right where i was going because like the these are the type of women that are in the comments talking about what i would have loved if my man would just take me to popeyes but notice what she had to keep doing. She had to keep putting herself in a situation to be disrespected before he decided to show up for the date. And if you look at her behavior in this situation, this kind of lets you know that she's okay with people not showing up there, for, not showing up and being there for her. Because I'm, how do you continuously keep having him not show up? For a lot of women, after the very first time he didn't show up, that would have been enough for them. But she persisted in his mistiness. The way the article describes it feels like tunnel vision. Like she met this guy mm -hmm. online and knew she had to meet him in person. And like the way I'm reading it, I agree with what you said, by the way, like you are, you are, you have a master's, um, you are a vice president at one company. You are the president of a um, chapter of a different association. How are you getting stood up twice and you're like, okay, but don't do it one more. How are, how are you, you are a vice president and a president. How are you? like is this an issue i don't i can't assign someone i can't decide whether or not someone values themselves or whether or not someone loves themselves or feels like they are worthy of more but like what is it about being a graduate from a master's program and a vice president and a president what is it what what is it about being so accomplished and beautiful too because she's a beauty it's not like she's ugly like mm -hmm. we looked at the pictures she's a very beautiful woman um, what is it about being so accomplished and so beautiful that makes you feel like if I get stood up twice, then I just need to wait around for a third time because it might be like, I, what does this say about your self-worth? I don't mean this to shame her, by the way. I just, as a legitimate question, what are you thinking in these moments? Uh -huh. If this is, if this is like the self-worth really that it a goes vice back president, down to... Hmm? What you say? I was saying, I think it really goes back down to a lot of these women have brought into the fact in order to be seen as quote unquote a woman that they need a man because need a man. And you know, there used to be an old saying that said that says that I'd rather have a piece of a man than no man at all. That's that men mentality of the scarcity mindset of I'll take anything so I don't feel like I'm I'm missing out on something. Plus, in general, a lot of times when you talk to women who are willing to co-sign on this type of behavior, these typically are the women who do not like being alone. So they rather have the appearance of having somebody than to go alone and be comfortable with being by themselves until they find somebody that that's more that's more worthy of their standards than just taking anything. This was just like, okay, um, he's sorta here, so let me just make this work type of mindset. Um because you brought up um a scarcity mindset. I can't remember the numbers exactly, but I do remember that um, Ralph Richard Banks was talking about in his study in book is marriage for white people. The fact that in college, for example, black men who are um, 
collegially educated become a kind of commodity and they start dating co-currently because apparently black women in college have such a scarce amount of black men available who are similarly educated that they are um, fighting over fighting over the few that are there. So maybe she saw that this man had an associate's degree and he's the only person on this app who had one. I don't know. And the article says he's talking to like five other women outside of her to our knowledge, five other women. Um, maybe this is one of those cases where people felt like this is a scarce commodity and we got to fight over it or something. I don't know. I don't know. I really, I don't know how someone, I couldn't get stood up twice and be like, well, fool, fool me, uh, fool me three times. Oh, was it fooled me three times. Well, fool me four times. Again, I can't imagine the self-esteem of someone who's a vice president and president and has a master's like imagine imagine the self-esteem of an average black woman if this is a vice president president beautiful woman with a master's degree can you imagine the self-esteem of like someone who's average for there to be a conversation about standards being too high does not make sense to me well we'll bring out the standards being too high thing um, women from other communities chimed in on the fact that what quote unquote black women standards being too high was actually the bare minimum in their communities. Like this is not asking for for the moon. Like how how basic is it to just show simple respect to say, hey. I'm not able to make it to the date. I'm not going to be able to show up for our date tonight. That's what a two second conversation, really. It doesn't take much effort to let somebody know that, hey, I cannot show up for the date. For me, as soon as he didn't call and he was like five minutes late and I hadn't heard anything from him, that would have been enough for me. I'm just not willing to have my time wasted because. That's time I could have been given to something that I would enjoy doing or spending time with family or, heck, finding something on YouTube or Netflix to enjoy. That's time I could have been doing anything but wasting my time waiting on that person. So I don't appreciate people wasting my time. So if that's even... Notice this is starting off. We haven't even gotten past the first date yet. This is the impression he's given to somebody for the very first time is that I won't bother to show up for you. And if he's already doing that when he's dating you, this is when everybody's using the representative. So that's already letting you know it can't help but to be down here from there. If this is how he's choosing to show up with you he's letting you know he's he's not really serious in the first place because this is not the actions of somebody who's actually liking this person this is all oh, you were just you know what i settled for and i'm going to treat you like you're what i settled for that's what it's giving to me Am I on? Um, hello, Leah. Welcome. Hi. 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 Thank you. I will say, when it comes to Black women having standards, this is why I will never, I'll never shoot down a sprinkle, sprinkle girly. Uh, never in my life. Uh, because... <laughs> There has to be some balance to the equation. And I know that it veers into SW. Um, at the same time, get it how you live. Um, <laughs> um, I think it is really sad, though. And I think it's more common for women as they get older, Black women in particular, to have these diminutive standards. I mean, I've seen it in my own family. Um, I have a family member who is a registered nurse and she works for the government. I won't say her position, but um, she married a guy who was a car dealer um, and he quit 
being a car dealer so that way he can chill at home and she's still working past her point of retirement to compensate for his income. Um, and we're black. <laughs> we're black with a couple of different things, but black for the most part. Um, so yeah, it's just sad. Um, sprinkle, sprinkle, ladies. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> but that's why I love the sprinkle, sprinkle lady because I actually know her name, but I enjoy watching her content because she take these men as seriously as they take themselves. And I find it hilarious because oftentimes she'll find men in her comments thinking that they're going to put her in, in her place. And she is just as unfazed and, and unbothered as she should be. Because, like, I never understood why women having standards is an issue for other women. If we don't have the same standards, that's fine. We don't have to have the same standards. If you're willing to tolerate somebody not showing up for you three times in a row and you still want to be bothered with that person, that's on you, sweetie. But everybody is not willing to tolerate that and put up with that. Some people are actually want way more than that and come in with a Popeye's date after you've repeatedly disrespected this woman. To me, that was just more disrespect. You couldn't even be bothered to find a decent restaurant. It and shows for the, the people in the chat for her. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So sorry. For the people me. in the chat. Oh, no, I couldn't. I'm sorry. For the people who wanted to know what SW was in the chat, um, that is work with your nether regions, um, also known as being a lady of the night, uh, a prostitution, um, if you uh, weren't sure. Um, in Sprinkle Sprinkle, some people say it leads people into SW because it is very transactional. I agree that it is transactional. Um, at the same time, if you want to be transactional, get it how you live. Um, that's the method that I, I go by. Now, I'm I a SW? No. Am I a sprinkle, sprinkle girl? No. But I also don't rock with men, really. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But see, I don't see nothing wrong with it being transactional like that. Because these men are making it very transactional. Because let's talk about what they've been saying to these men. Well, what do you bring to the table? And most of them don't have a table nor a chair for that woman to sit down into, but got the nerve to tell somebody, well, you trying to be a gold digger. Sweetie, you don't even have pie right for her to dig for, okay? Less more gold. But they're allowed to get away with this, this mindset of where's the prize? We have literally seen it all over TikTok and YouTube about these men talking about they're the prize now. And most of them aren't aren't even a constellation prize at this point. Let's just be real about it. So if I have an issue with men wanting to participate in the patriarchy until it becomes inconvenient for them. You were down with the patriarchy when it was serving you. But the men and a woman actually have standards and say, well, since we're making this transactional, here's the transactions I need from you now. It's a problem because the whole reason that Sheriff Seven is saying what she's saying is because she's just recognizing that these men are seeing relationships as transactional. So she's like, well, fine. If it's going to be on those terms, then ladies have terms as well. Don't just allow it to be one-sided where he's doing all the receiving and you're doing all the giving. Um, someone said that New York Times wedding announcements are usually endearing and aspirational. Publishing the Popeye's parking lot engagement story was meant to humble black women and make them think it's acceptable to settle for mediocre treatment. They then went on to say they wouldn't be renewing their subscription. Do you think there's any validity to that? I absolutely do because People tend to see Black women as the mule of the society. It's not just with dating. It's with um, a lot of times you'll see people demanding that Black women 
protest on their behalf, even though when it's time for them to, to return a favor, all black women get is crickets when it's their turn. So this is just more of, well, we're going to make sure that we keep you in your place. We're going to remind you that this is what you're going to get. So when you're talking about how dare you not take me to, to a restaurant that's on my standard level, then there's this article for these men to use to say, well, she was willing to accept it. But people conveniently forget that the Black community is not monolithic. What may be good for one woman isn't necessarily true for the next woman. It's annoying as heck that Black women are not allowed to be in their divine feminine, feminine essence, that they're expected to be the submissive providers. But yet, and so these same Black men will go into other communities and be more than willing to provide for those women. And the same qualities that they find so terrible in a Black woman, they think is exotic and spicy. And, it's a whole different energy because a lot of this just really boils down to anti-blackness. Let's just call a thing a thing. It's straight anti-blackness being served up to black women. That's why there's they can't stand for a black woman to talk about her being her soft girl moment or you know black luxury. Anything where she's not struggling, where she's not being harmed or in a scarcity mindset is a problem because it doesn't fit the image of the quote unquote, the black angry woman or the black masculine woman imagery that they want to continue to perpetuate. Agreed. Um, I've just made, I've just been made aware that Burb and Bougie is live. So I'm going to try to wrap up quickly because I also don't have anything else nice to say. So I don't want to. Okay. I She got the husband she wanted. So uh -huh. I'm not going to say I'm happy for them, but she's grown. She can make her decisions. Um, and it is what it is. But uh, I don't think anybody wants to read about struggle stories in an environment where black women are fighting to be honored, adored, and respected, as Kia Richard put on Twitter. That's also the person who said she thinks this story was meant to humble black women. Um, that story could have been in the draft. Uh, it does seem disrespectful. And I'm not sure why I haven't seen black men who are outraged about this. I've seen two men comment on it. And one of them said um, that y'all need to leave this couple alone. Why are y'all mad that they're happy? And y'all- But let's be truthful. Handled. This is also disrespecting black men because a lot of black men- Yeah, why aren't you do. mad? Why aren't you mad this article is, this is a whole stereotype that you're a low effort player. This is offensive. Mm -hmm. I don't care which gender you are. If you're black, I would find this offensive. It's extremely offensive. And thank you for having me as always, Prince Patty. Thank you for coming up. And uh, thank Leah as well for coming up to contribute. Oh, you're very welcome. Have a good um, one. I'm going to play the interlude and we can have a quick after show. Okay. <laughs> Um, yes, I hope she has a prenup. I did see several comments like that uh, everywhere. Let me see a few more comments I see. The older I get, the more I realize most people just end up settling after a while, probably why the divorce rates are encroaching on 60%. I hope, mm -hmm. hope it works out, but if it doesn't, hope she has a prenup. Hope she's smart enough to do that because otherwise she effed up marrying a gold digger that she can't get rid of due to marrying it. Someone said if she was smart, she wouldn't have married him. Unfortunately, there are people who are financially or job or career smart, but dumb when it comes to their romantic or personal life. Hopefully she was financially smart to get a prenup. 
I totally agree with that. But it goes back to what my father used to say. Just because you have a degree doesn't mean that you have common sense. And we can see, unfortunately, there's a lot of women who allow their common sense to be dismissed from the room when when it comes to their dating life. Because this is just weird for me <laughs> that you were probably put that he stood you up three times before he actually decided to show up. And then when he did show up, there was no effort put into it at all. Because he I'm was being... late for that date too, correct? Yes. Um, okay. Or I don't know if he was late for that date, but I don't care, to be honest. I don't care if he was mm -hmm. late for his Popeye's parking lot date or not. Um, <laughs> I think there is a Reddit post that lays this out perfectly someone numbered it and she says i hate it here this is on the black lady subreddit i hate it here she just wanted a husband she didn't fall in love with him she just needed a body that crossed off her check marks i also wonder how much of quote building generational wealth he's talking about is bs so many effing things about this one he already canceled a first date twice and you had to give him a ultimatum even before meeting him just so you could go on a first date who gives that many chances to someone they don't know? Number two, parking lot of Popeyes. I get that it was during the pandemic, but really? Number three, I hope he can he at least offered to buy her food when he went to get a meal at KFC for himself. Number four, she was the one leading the whole relationship. You will be my husband. I need you to move in with me after six months. I just personally don't like that. And I have my own philosophy. That's interesting. I didn't think about that point because she's the one who had to make the initiative and say, OK, if you don't come on the date, then you don't do this. She's the one who had to say we are going to get married. And he was like, what? Looking at her like she's crazy. She's the one who was like, you're going to move in after six months. Um, she's the one who was like, before you start talking to me, you need to cut off those other five women. So she's definitely leading the whole relationship in my mind. I don't know them personally. But notice the scarcity mindset of saying, I need you. Like, do you really need somebody who can't even be bothered to, to show up for you at all? What are I you missing all through, exactly? The lack of I being noticed, there? I noticed the scarcity all throughout this uh, article, all throughout this relationship. But I love that for them. Number five, why did he feel the need to mention that he was talking to five other women? It's important for him to portray a certain image of himself, and I don't like that image. Anyway, I hope it works out for them. I hope she saw proof behind his words of what she's trying to build. Cool. Because the whole point of him bringing up the five women was to put her in her place and let her know, right now, I'm settling to be here with you. Because I have five other women I could have been with. And yet she doesn't see the under the blatant disrespect that was. Because why would you need to bring that up? There was also a comment that says, there's a whole rant that I have about how the media assaults black women with the constant message that we are undesirable. And this is why we have to be careful about what media we consume. Um, but I'm a bit too under and under caffeinated to get into all that right now. Someone said it's intentional. Another black woman submitted a beautiful story about her childhood friends falling in love and in their 50s to um, New York Times. But it was rejected and they picked this story instead. Thankfully, Essence chose them. A lot of white people have a fetishistic fascination with seeing black people in miserable situations. If you show them someone who's black and happy or simply doing anything other than playing basketball, rapping, speaking and slaying, nothing wrong with these things or et cetera, they can't make sense of it and they get angry. Um, but th this is to further promote the caste system that's been in place in the United States. That's all this reeks of is showing the caste system and see black women, you're at the bottom of the room. That's what this was supposed to remind black women of. Um, so that's, that's all I have, y'all. That's all I have. I am tired. Um, I'm tired. I'm just tired. I'm just really tired. Uh, so they sat in the car and he went to get a, a $5 box from KFC and she sat there and watched them eat it and they fell in love and got married. I love that for them. Um, I hope that it goes well. I'm going to show you all that uh, parking lot one more time.
so he couldn't be bothered to go to a Popeye's in a nice area. It's just, well, here we are. And now you get to watch me eat. Said this was close to where and, he lived. So he was trying to pick something convenient. He's all about convenience. And, and there was no red flags at all with the fact that he chose to eat in front of her face and not provide her not a thing. Okay. No, it was part of her vision. I don't know. I don't know. But I do think we can end, since y'all brought it up, we can end on a sprinkle, sprinkle note. Sports. Man, y'all need to come out here. Everybody here is real. Um, five, six o'clock, all you smell is food cooking. A reef con pollo. And all the ladies are nice here. They don't have no attitude. Um, they think I'm Drake. Say that you a lesbian, girl. Me too. They don't know what it means, but they be, they know the song. They know the sound. The only thing that's giving it away that I'm not Drake. <laughs> I got to lose Shira Seven is unhinged. That's I love this. <laughs> Shira Seven is petty for this. I love this love of petty. <laughs> Ooh, I've been eating too. Good. That's that good call for the chip. Okay, I got my roll. Y'all need to get y'all some of this good old cologne. It's the dupe for the the millionaire. It smells just the same. And them girls love it over here. I'm telling you, they don't know the difference. They don't know the difference. They ain't asking if that buckle wrap. They said, oh, you smell good. You smell good, daddy. You know where it reminded me of the, the um, black lady that, that, the the other black no lady that did this? Huh? And she was like, but nobody wants you, though. Because he was talking about, I'm going to go over there. And she was like, but but nobody is looking for you, though. <laughs> That's the video. I got so tickled. It's in the same. Boy, I'm reading about the unalive rate for a passport, bro, specifically increasing um as well as apparently there was a young man who traveled to the dominican republic or somewhere with a hundred dollars and he didn't know that wasn't going to be enough to get his hotel and get food for all the days and fly back so he got stranded i'm i believe it i, I don't believe anybody who comes up and says they're going to another country to find women but what made it so bad is other black men were warning them that other men are not going to tolerate you coming into their communities and trying to take advantage of their women. Like they were warned numerous times by other black men and other men, period, that this wasn't a good idea. So I don't have any empathy for somebody that goes to another country and think that they're going to basically go over there to take advantage of other people's women. Like the whole fact that you were going over there just for that is problematic to begin with. So you kind of get what you sold. You were on some mess, so the messiness came to you. Agreed. Well, you have a good night. Up under here. Up. Have a good night, Purple Lover. Thank you for joining. I couldn't find nobody to give me no edge up. Plus, I'm bald anyway, so. But they don't know that. They think I'm. They think I'm Drake for real. And y'all, it's hard to find lotion out here. Mm. So y'all get to y'all hotel. Why does she have? <laughs> why does she have everything? She got the do rag, the beard, the belly, the neck pillow, the ashy. I'm sorry. Pill or whatever. Y'all make sure y'all keep that lotion on y'all, cause I can just be ashy all day, every day. So bros, y'all come on out. Y'all get them passports. And the only port you the only port you need. Okay, the passport. Forget that child support. Come on, get this passport. Okay. Forget them greedy American gold digging women over there in America. They don't know how to treat a hard working five figure salary brother. But I got my beard. <laughs> Not the five figure salary. I'm sorry. Or Get some of this ash while that. Yeah, I got my cash for the day. See how much I can buy with this. How much is this? You want some money? Come on over here. Beautiful. Oh yeah, she is beautiful. Can I film you for my friends? 
Yeah, she looking good, fellas. Oh, no, I wasn't trying to give you none of the money. I was just counting my money. But you look real pretty, though, brother. I just got to work on his belly, though, you know. I, I be telling them I'm Drake daddy because they, they know Drake ain't got that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's my son. Okay, that was a nice little detox. Somebody said, tell me she ain't playing in James clothes. <laughs> Brazil kicked them out and changed their whole visa policy. Yeah, I think they said you have to have at least 1500 in the bank to go to uh, Brazil. I'm not sure what the amount was, but they were like, we're trying to protect you from yourself. So as well as like, we don't want people praying. They said it's giving Raven Simone. Yeah, I can see that actually. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. That's that's not Raven Simone. That's Raven Baxter. Somebody said, this is my grandpa in Thailand right now. She got too much free time. I've been eating too good with that good old call center check. Love it. Love it. Passport. The only port you need. And somebody said, James need to come get her. Okay, with that being said, thank you, everybody, for joining. Be sure to leave a like. Um, Burb and Bougie is live. If you guys are interested, good friend of the channel, uh, I will quickly post her link in case you guys do want to go there and show some love. Um, I don't know, leave a heart or something or, or like it. I've... Bourbon Bougie don't tell people when she was going live. She just go live. Didn't tell me nothing. Let me see if she said something on her community tab. Okay, she said she was going live on her community. I'll give it to her. But I'm going to head over there and show her some love in the comments. Because I do like her channel. She does put out a lot of content. And I think a lot of it's good. So thank you everybody for watching. Um, I think everybody here is in the discord, so I won't drop the link, but it is in the description of the video if you guys are interested and have a good night. Oh, let me drop the link. Excuse me, pin the link. My bad. How do I pin it? <clears throat> oh, okay. I got it there. The link's pinned. Go leave a heart or a panda or something. Say hi. Go over there and give her 15 $100 super chats, everybody. I know you have it in you. No, the way I saw this pastor preaching and he said, God told me somebody in that area has a $10,000 donation tonight. Anyway, y'all have a good night.